I was the queen of procrastination, never getting anything done and always putting it off for another day. And I beat myself up over it. So I continued to procrastinate and hate myself for it over and over and over again. I was late for everything from picking up my kids from after school care or dance class to missing the train or bus or any public transportation that relied on the time. Procrastination was my mortal enemy and I needed to find a way to murder it easily. And since Jay is the person to go to to help bury those procrastination bodies, here we are. So today we're going to give you the secret how to murder procrastination. And last week we gave you the secret right away in the intro. But today we're not going to do that. You're going to have to stay to the end to find out this secret. So Jay, why do I procrastinate even if it feels so bad? Well, let's start with what is procrastination? You know me and definitions. Yes. Okay. And if we're going to have a discussion about something. We better be both clear on what we're talking about. Right. Okay. Okay. This is a huge mistake most people make in their conversations. Right. Okay. So I'm going to suggest a definition. To me, procrastination is intentionally delaying something we desire or intending to do something and then delaying it, even though we know it's better for it to be done. Yeah. That yeah. Sounds this like is... what procrastination yes. is. Yes, because usually for me, it's something that I really do want to do and get done. And I feel like when I decide to do it, or I think I decide, you intend, I intend to do it, it feels good. Yeah. So there you go. Procrastination is intending to do something and then delaying it despite knowing it's better off done. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So what would this look like in a common example? You sit down to do a task, you habitually or by default, project into the future of what that task might be like, how it's going to feel, yada, yada, yada. And as soon as you think that, you get a feeling like, oh, I don't want to do this, or this is going to be yucky. This is a hassle, something. You feel negatively about the task. Yes. So your coping mechanisms kick in and you start doom scrolling or call a friend or go make coffee or whatever it is because your coping mechanisms want you to avoid the yucky task. Yes. So your mood when you decided to do the task or intended to do the task was good. You were like, this is a good task. I intend for it to be done in my life. Yeah. And then the very next second or whenever you sat down to do it, your mood changed. You started thinking negative things about the task in the future, how long it's going to take, whatever. What I have to give up to do this, the thing. Yeah, yeah whatever. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you do that, your mood lowers and your coping mechanisms kick in. And to get you back in a good mood, they send you off on distraction. Mm -hmm. So you end up avoiding the task, but you also avoid the awesome victory that you intended to have in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Does that sound like laziness to you? Would you call that laziness? The thing I just described? No. Right. No. Laziness is very different. Yeah. From what you what you described. Well, we agreed that's what procrastination is. Yes. Intending to do something delaying it, even though we know it's much better off done in our lives. No, I think the laziness label is an excuse for, well, one, one not knowing or not wanting to admit that you don't want to feel the feeling. Yeah. Like the hard part of doing the task. Right. You want the feeling of, of when it's complete, but not that hard part. Right. So if you procrastinate, it does not mean you're lazy. Okay. Does it sound like a lack of motivation? Because you intended to do something, so you were clearly motivated to do it, mm -hmm. but then somewhere along the way, your motivation changed. Mm -hmm. But would you say this is an unmotivated person who's procrastinating? No, because if I was unmotivated, I wouldn't have these tasks in mind to do. Right. You'd just be laying on the couch smoking weed and not intending to do anything. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't even have thoughts of how can, what fixes, make this, do this. Right. Yeah. So is it fair to say that if someone is procrastinating, they're not lazy and they're not unmotivated? Yes. Yeah. You cannot call them that. Don't slap that on them. They know they're procrastinating. We know they're procrastinating. It has nothing to do with laziness or a lack of motivation. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Right. But this is a game changer. I bet most people watching this have had no idea. They thought procrastination was related to laziness and, mo and motivation. Yeah. And, and I would agree with them because... I used to think it was the same thing. Oh, I'm procrastinating because I'm lazy. I can't motivate myself. I can't regulate my emotions and I can't regulate my time and not. Yeah. So 
Yeah. Well, emotions is actually what it does come down to. Procrastination is a side effect or a symptom of our emotional states. When we intend to do something or make a decision to do something, our emotions are in a good place. I intend to work out. I intend to eat better. I intend to do the dishes. I intend to call that client. Yeah. That moment of intention or that moment of decision happens when we're in a positive emotional state. Mm -hmm. The procrastination happens when we start projecting what we're going to have to give up and how hard it's going to be and how long it's going to take. And we're now thinking about something yes. different. We're not yes. thinking about the awesome end result. We're thinking about the other parts that are involved in realizing this thing and our emotions change. We let our emotions change by thinking that way and projecting that future and by seeing that negativity, our emotions have changed. And now as a side effect of our new emotional state, we take a much different path. We take a path of distraction, of making coffee, of doom scrolling, of avoiding the task that we really wanted done. Yeah. Can you yeah. see how procrastination is directly related to our emotional state? And if we were able to manage our emotional state, we could avoid the nasty side effects of procrastination. Totally, totally, totally. Uh, because when I finally do do whatever that particular thing is that I have been procrastinating, it's because I've raised my emotion about the thing I'm giving up. I'll just use an example. So I used to do all the editing for our old YouTube videos. Not anymore. Now you do it. But back then I used to do it. Right. And so one of the reasons I procrastinated it was because I couldn't listen to music when I edited because I needed both headphones. I could use one in with music and one with the video, but sometimes I miss some stuff when I did that. So I know, I knew back then that having both headphones and focusing on the video really is more important than listening to music. And so I would procrastinate the, the editing for that reason, because I hate not having music. I hate that feeling of silence. I hate that sound. And like, and, and so that was my reason. But to, to turn that around, I like after procrastinating for a couple of days, I'd be like, well, it's not going to take me that long. Let's just do this. And uh, we can take a music break. And and anyway, I'll get to listen to to what Jay's saying in the video, because it's always always awesome advice from the beginning of time. Everything you say is awesome advice. <laughs> it's just great perspectives. And so that's I would psych myself up for that part of it because it wasn't the actual actions of the editing yeah it was long and annoying but it didn't bother me the way not having music did. yeah it's a great example and so what i'm hearing is that when you thought negatively about silence mm -hmm. procrastination reared its head and you didn't do the task Yes. yes. Eventually, you learn to think positive about silence and psych yourself up about silence and see the positives in silence and see the silver linings of silence. And once you did that, your mood changed. You didn't feel so bad about silence. And then procrastination got murked. It's true. And it's true. I hit it over, a head, over the head with a shovel. Yeah. You hit it over the head with a positive emotional state. Yeah. Yeah. You hit it over the head with a better mood. Yes. Yeah, but you know what? It's funny that I didn't even realize that until just now. Like all this time, anytime I've ever procrastinated something and I finally followed through, when I followed through, this is the exact routine of how I got to do it. Like I spun whatever it was in a positive way. Yeah, and you see this happen with anyone. If I give you two groups of people, they both said they wanted to work out, but group A actually got up and got to the gym and group B didn't. You know what the commonality would be and the difference would be? Yeah, positive thinking. Yeah, group A would be like, you know what? It's worth it. And I, I feel good about this. And I like waking up this early. And this makes me proud of myself. And I'm just, I'm psyched. And it's a great uh, way to prove to myself that I can do this. And they just generally feel positive about the act of going to the gym. Right. Some of them are like, I love the gym. I freaking live there. Like, But they've all elevated their mood about this thing. That's right. the point. That is the commonality in group A. And the difference between them and group B is group B doesn't think anything positive about it. They could. They have imaginations. They have brains. There's no limit on thoughts. They could easily think a single or a triple or a quintuple batch of thoughts that were positive about going to the gym. They could, but they don't. And as soon as they think negatively and they lower their emotional state, what rears its ugly head? Procrastination. Exactly. And then they don't go to the gym. Yeah. This is it. You can do the study 
a million times on a million topics with a million things, the people who lower their emotional state about the task or about things related to the task will procrastinate. And the people who somehow find a way to elevate their mood and feel better about something and think more positively about that thing or things related to it won't have any procrastination issues. Barely any. Well, I said that we weren't going to give the secret until the end, but I feel like we just did. (laughs) <laughs> like, I feel like we like solved procrastination for everyone evermore. Like, it's not really the secret that we have in mind, but it feels like it. Yeah, you're right. I kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit, but it's more nuanced, right? Mm-hmm. Just just knowing that raising your emotional state is the key to solving all procrastination is good. But how many people are going to be able to go and apply it? How many people know how to raise their emotional state? So I hear a lot because, you, you know, I'm out there talking to people and I'm marketing and I get a lot of questions and stuff. Uh, and one of the things that I, I get pushed back on is I can't change my feelings and I can't. It is how it is. And like I've had abuse and trauma and, and I'm not belittling it in any way, but I have too. And so has Jay. Like we know what trauma and abuse and worse is violence against us personally, racism and classism and all the isms like we both together have experienced every single one of them yet we still are able to i mean i'm not perfect at it i still have ways to go but we are still able to turn our feelings positive when it's negative i did it before this podcast i had an issue with some people and and i had to raise my energy and i had to express and i I said things i don't normally say and it felt really good but because i had to turn it into something positive for myself So I know a lot of people that might see this and be like, yeah, but you don't know my story or I've had this abuse or trauma or blah, blah, blah or whatever. And again, I'm not trying to trivialize it, but everyone has some trauma in their life. And all those people that are super positive, they, what what do you always tell me? The fat people make the best skinny people. The people with the most trauma make the happiest people, right? Like this makes you to be the thing you want to be, right? So if you have a lot of negativity and trauma, you'd be the best person to turn it around and be positive and get rid of your procrastination by changing your feelings and your thoughts on on whatever it is you're avoiding, right? Yeah, I totally agree. And we have a whole 85 minute episode on how to be happy in a shitty world. Yes, we do. So that gives a lot of trauma hacks. Yep. And speaking of hacks, my whole point was we're going to go over some amazing time hacks in this video that expand on the whole emotional state beats procrastination thing. Yay. Well, then let's get to it. Right. Yeah. All right. So Rise Rebels, how do you feel about turning those negative feelings about why you're procrastinating things into positives? Have you done it before? When you beat procrastination, what exactly do you do? I'd love to hear about it. Please share in the comments for me so we can open up conversation between us and you and help those cute little lurkers. We love you. All right. So then we're going to move on. So Steve Jobs knew how to murder procrastination. And I know because he said, remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure. These things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. What does being in the face of death have to do with procrastination? Great question. And let's walk through an example. Say you had a huge list of things to do. Make lunch, do the dishes, call clients, pick up the kids from school, make some cards, have date night, install a new printer, get toner for the printer, squeeze in makeup in there somewhere, clean the house, whatever. Wow. It's a giant list of stuff to do in a day, right? Yes. That could overwhelm pretty much anybody. Yeah. Now, what if we take that exact same list, but you know in your head and in your heart, this is your last day on earth. Is the list still overwhelming? No. Why? Because I'm going to die tomorrow, so I don't care about half that stuff. More than half. Right. And isn't it possible that we could all die at any moment? A hurricane could hit, an earthquake, a serial killer, a car accident. Yes. Or even just an allergic reaction. Yeah. We could choke on our ham sandwich like Mama Kath. Like. Right. So most of us go through life acting like we're immortal, acting like death doesn't matter, and we can just fritter away our days and do whatever we want and spend as much time as we want on anything. That's true. 
But is that a correct attitude? Are any of us immortal? No. Is death coming for us all? Yes. Death is coming for us all. Right. And could it happen any time? Yes. We don't know when it's going to be our last day. Exactly. So this is what Steve Jobs is talking about. He knows that being aware of our mortality and being aware of the finite nature of our short little lives makes you decide things well. It makes you prioritize well. And it cuts through all the clutter of your daily lists. Anytime a person has an overwhelming list, they could just think, if this is my last day, what would I be proud to do? And they would instantly cut off like a third of their list or half their list or something. And if you're like Steve, you're doing this every day because he's he wants to build an empire. He wants to start a family. He wants to do a billion different things. He can't afford to have a, a third of his list be junk every day. Yeah. It should all be life or death stuff. It sh- he should always be doing the most important things if today was his last day. And it's because he lives that way, He accomplished a lot in his lifetime. And if you look at anyone else who's accomplished a lot in their lifetime, they know this. They're aware that death is hanging over our heads. It comes to all of us. It's not something to be worried about or panicked about, but it is something to help us prioritize. It's to help us make wise decisions. If you know this could be your last day on earth, you're going to smoke it away in a stupor on the couch, or you're going to meet people. You're going to play with your family. You're going to play with your dog. You're going to try to help an old lady cross the street. You're going to do something worthwhile with your last day. To leave some sort of an impact before I go. Right. Most people want to leave some sort of an impact before they go. Well, you won't leave an impact if half your list is bullshit. And the fastest way to find out if half your list is bullshit is to imagine that today is your last day. Do you want to spend the last day of your life ranting about some people who pissed you off? Do you want to spend it in drama? Do you want to spend it fighting with your spouse? Or do you want to make amends, go out, have an ice cream together, and then help the world? Donate to a charity. Something. Yes. Yes. I don't want to spend my days. I don't know how many I have left. And if tomorrow's my last day, the last thing I want to do is spend it worrying about people who annoyed me or pissed me off. Right. And most of the tasks we procrastinate on shouldn't even be on our list anyways. A good chunk of them shouldn't be on our list anyways. So I know it and Steve knew it. And now you know it. You all know it. If you want to bury procrastination six feet under, make sure you're at peace with your own death. That's really good. So it took me a long time to be at peace with death in general. I used to be terrified of it. And then I experienced something spiritual while someone I loved was dying. And now I understand that it's a beautiful thing and there's nothing to be afraid of, actually. But using that to help guide me and and to make choices, this is a really good idea because- You should try it. Yes, I have never. I've never considered that when I'm looking at my list. I'm never or writing it or... Uh, Especially if you're overwhelmed. You know why I'm never overwhelmed? Yeah. Is it this? Yeah. I faced my death a long time ago. I know I'm I'm like on borrowed time. It doesn't even matter. So I'm going to do what I love in my last moments. And if I get too many things thrown at me, I'll just cut the ones that I wouldn't be proud to do on my last day. We all might die tomorrow. You're going to say I, I did the dishes and I worried about makeup? Or are you going to go do what was important? do whatever. Right. So it's super easy for me to trim my list down anytime it's overwhelming. Right. That makes sense. Well, I, I, you've taught me this the other day I was, I had six things on my list. They weren't like major or like that time consuming. I just couldn't decide what I wanted to do. And there was not enough time to do. uh, I was right. There wasn't enough time in the day. At first you thought there was. I was like, you seriously think that's an okay list? Yes. Like, are you, Um, how do you assess your time? Even travel alone like is going to take you forever. So we we eventually figured out that this was too much for one human to do. You wouldn't give it to an assistant. I asked you, would you give this list to an assistant? And you're like, no, no, no. Why are you giving it to yourself? Yeah. And so I was full of overwhelm, which doesn't happen that often anymore. But it was like it kind of hit me hard. Like, why? This is not a difficult thing to choose. Why am I having a hard time with this? And so I asked you for help. And you helped guide me to the right answer. You didn't give me the answer. You helped guide me to the answer. And in the end, I pulled the sub card and said, please, please pick for me. <laughs> but not everyone is is blessed to, to have that relationship or be able to do that, which I totally understand. So using your the the overwhelm, like what is the most overwhelming part of this? Or if today is my last day. On the list. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, if your list is bringing you overwhelmed, what's bringing you overwhelmed? What part of the list is it? 
And if this is my last day on earth, would anyone care if I don't do these things that are causing me overwhelm? And and I'm going to go a little bit deeper even and ask yourself why they're overwhelming to you. Why do they feel? Is it something you don't really want to do? Is it something you feel obligated to do? Please never do those things then. Like, because if you go back to the list tomorrow and you still feel that way, you're not, then don't even bother to do those. Just, just, it's not getting done. That's it. And, and it's easier said than done. I, I understand sometimes, but it's just practice. So thank you so much. You are awesome. So Rise Rebels, have you tried this before? Have you thought about your list as like, what am I going to do if this is my last day on earth? Have you faced your death, your mortality, because we all, no matter how great and wonderful and amazing and rich and famous we are, we all have to face it eventually. Uh, Have you used this as a way to stop your procrastination or help it in any way? I'd love to know how this resonates with you. Uh, So let me know in the comments, please. So in your newest article that no one has seen yet because it's still being edited, you say procrastination doesn't exist. So how can we murder something that doesn't exist? It's not the chupacabra or Bigfoot. It might not be, but those are good examples because you murder procrastination the same way. How do you murder a Greek or Roman god? How do you murder a trend, a fad? <laughs> God, I don't know. You ever seen American Gods by Neil Gaiman? Yes. Love that show, yes. So in, in that show, the gods are always worried and fighting for their lives. Right. Because something can kill them. It is when people stop believing in them. Yes. Yes. Right. So if you want to murder the chupacabra, if the whole world stopped believing in them, no no village talked about them, nobody even mentioned them, would it exist? No. Right. Exactly. No. So if you can remove the belief in something, you can kill it. Okay. I feel like I'm having one of those brain explosion (laughs) moments that I love so much. Okay. So I want you to please, please look at the camera and repeat that again for me. I said, if you want to kill an idea or a concept or something intangible, you simply get everyone to stop believing in it. And when there's no belief in it, it no longer exists. When there's no belief in it, you have murdered that intangible concept. So if we don't believe in procrastination, it cannot exist. Correct. We give it, we give it life by focusing on it and thinking about it and worrying about it. In all the years you've known me, have I ever given any time, energy, attention, or life to the concept of procrastination in my stuff? No, never. And have I ever... Pro- I don't even think you've ever used that word. And have I ever procrastinated on anything? No, no. You see the connection? Well, now I did. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you don't believe in procrastination. Well, like I said in the beginning, I believe what people call procrastination is the simple and natural side effect or symptom of lowering my emotional state about certain topics. So procrastination isn't really a thing. It's just your emotions, your negative emotion about the thing. Yeah, we all have emotions. <laughs> This is awesome. This is great. I love this. This is next level. Okay. So do we all have emotions? Yes. Yes. Okay. And should there be natural side effects from with our emotions? Yes. If we don't have proper emotional self-care, it should manifest in some kind of negative side effects, right? Yes. If you don't have proper dietary care, you should manifest some side effects, yes. right? If you don't have proper care of your relationship, <laughs> there should be some negative side effects, right? Right. Yes. Okay. And so- If you don't have proper care of your moods, there should be side effects about the tasks you're going to do. No? Yeah. Right. And one of those side effects is procrastination. So to me, procrastination isn't a thing. It's the natural side effects of, of an actual thing. Like there is an actual thing my emotions, my emotional state, and my emotional self-care. That's definitely a thing. Everyone on earth has to navigate that. But procrastination is just some fluff side effect of when I when I mishandled the actual thing. You guys, procrastination doesn't exist. Okay. All right. Like this is awesome. It's a side effect is what you're saying of your emotions. Your- yeah. Emotion. And that's why I showed you if group A manages their emotions well, they will get to the gym on time and have the discipline and do the thing. And if they start dropping their emotions, they'll join group B and they'll feel shitty about it and they'll have a side effect of procrastination. And I dare anyone to experiment with this. You can try this with anything on any topic. The procrastination will only come from the people with low emotional states 
regarding the topic or related topics. Okay, so I'm going to use us as examples right now, okay? Sure. I'm going to talk a little bit about what you do. So Jay is amazing, you guys. And he, like, as you, if you're a follower of ours, then you'll know he spits fire, has amazing perspectives, and he'll make you think. And he has a lot of work to help me get the podcast out because uh, we're, we're just a team of two, right? And so sometimes he has these huge, tremendous lists that if they were mine, I would probably crawl into a ball and just cry. Because uh, a lot of the the stuff, for me, anyway, it's time consuming. And I'm not really one to like be working on tiny little details on the computer, uh, in my hands, yes. And a lot of them I hate. And a lot of those things are not, I wasn't going to use hey, but they're I not hate your favorite. <laughs> they're not your favorite thing. He doesn't like to do a lot of um, editing and graphic work. And if you see any of our, our library of stuff, you'll know that we have incredible graphics editing and, and visuals in our, our stuff. And that's all Jay. And he is incredible at all that stuff. But it's not his favorite thing. He's not put on earth to be an editor or a graphic designer or any of that thing. Just because you're good at it doesn't mean you should do it. Anyway, so he's got this list of things he doesn't he doesn't particularly like. And he will run through them and knock them all off his plate. And anytime I ask how he is or what he's like, if I interrupt him, he always has a smile. He's never complaining. And if he is crunchy at the end of the day, he raises his energy and he feels better about whatever it is. He doesn't complain and he doesn't procrastinate. And then I can come in during the day in the middle of all that chaos that he's doing, say, hey, could you do something for me? Can you give me a, an invoice for a customer? Or could you help our my client with something real quick? Or And you know what he does? He stops what he's doing. He does what I ask. He gives it to me. And then he moves on. I have never seen the man procrastinate ever. At most, maybe I'll get it done tomorrow. I'll do this particular thing tomorrow because I'm I have a full plate or whatever. It's super impressive, right? And so now I'm going to tell you about me. <laughs> I get a huge list and I will cry. Not always, and, and I'm more in the past one now because I know that I can't doom scroll. That I'm not going to be able to listen to music for some of it. I am going to have to watch videos and research and do stuff, and and it. For me, it all goes back to the way I feel about sound and what I choose to do with my day. So where I will procrastinate, I don't think it's ever been in your vocabulary. So I know that was a lot to, to just show the difference between us, really. Also, your procrastination hurts me and our business quite a bit. So I was just going to say that, too. And when when I do procrastinate, then things come out slower. So Jay has this article that I mentioned earlier. It's done, but it needs editing. Who's the editor? Me. And then so I have a huge list of things to to get done. And instead of being cheerful like Jay does and stopping and doing that thing, I will get crunchy. Not towards him, but just in general of oh, I have one more thing I have to do. And all the, the that negativity starts to just pile up and pile up and things don't get done. And I might get one thing done at the end of the day, but I had to raise my energy on what I was going to do or the the hard part to to do it. And if I just got all the tasks in my hand and knew I had to do them, if I just raise my energy on it, I can take a break. It's no big deal. Oh, you know what? I could smoke and do this one. I can listen to music and do this one. But instead, just looking at it and, oh, and so this is where the procrastination comes in. So I have this amazing role model at my fingertips and I still, still have issues with this. Not as bad as before, but still have it. So if somebody who was homeless and probably procrastinated at, at feeling better about homeless for two years, right? You'd say that? Yep. Yeah. If he could raise his vibe and feel good about it and do the things and but literally take procrastination out of his vocabulary, then so can I and so can you. So like, why are we procrastinating? Murdering procrastination. It sucks. It hurts us. We hate it. You hate it. I hate it. It feels so bad when we do it. So let's stop, please. Thanks for being a good role model and for teaching me how procrastination isn't even a thing. I'm making it a thing in my head. They're making it a thing. We're all making it a thing. It doesn't even exist. It's just a side effect of your emotional state. All right. Well, 
Actually, procrastination not being a thing is a fresh view on taboos. <laughs> Just like our book, Eyes Wide Open, Volume 1. And in this book, Jay talks about the chain of choices. And the chain of choices is what you're choosing to get the outcome that you want. So are you choosing to embrace procrastination and love that word and give it existence? Because like Jay said, if we don't give it attention, it can't exist. So are you going to get yourself a copy of the world's first self-help coffee table book? We are giving it away for free in a PDF form. The link is in the description. And when you get it, you're going to be so happy because there's beautiful, beautiful art in here that's made by Jay and has incredible fresh views on all kinds of taboos, just like we discuss here on the podcast. So if you want more of that juicy goodness in the palm of your hands, Get yourself a copy of Eyes Wide Open Volume 1 because I don't know how long I'm going to give it away for because eventually I'm going to want to try to make some money on it, maybe. But for now, it's yours for free. So you made a meme that looks like a video game crosshairs. Did you do that to murder procrastination? (laughs) And what does it have to do with the urgency matrix? I don't know what that is. Yeah, that meme is my urgency matrix meme. And... It's just a coincidence that it looks like crosshairs. Oh, okay. It's really just the two axes on a graph. Oh, it's a cross, not... Yeah, or like coordinate systems on a compass. Oh, okay, yeah. It's the two axes. And the vertical one is labeled vital to trivial, okay? Mm -hmm. Because tasks can be vital or trivial. Yes. Or somewhere in between. Right. And the horizontal one is labeled shelfable to pressing. Because things can be shelfable, you know, put them on a shelf, like delay them. Uh They're optional, like get around to them. Or they can be pressing. Oh, you said pressing. I thought you said depressing. No. Shelfable to pressing. Okay. And so this creates four quadrants, right? One, two, three, four. Right. The, The cross creates four quadrants. Yes. This is called the urgency matrix because you can put any task into an appropriate quadrant. The quadrant on the top right is vital and Pressing. So things that are vital and pressing go up there. It's basically do now. Okay. If you have a Zoom call in five minutes and it's for a major client, it might be vital and pressing and you should probably do now. Yes. Right. Don't yeah. start doom scrolling. Right. Yes. Doom scrolling is in the opposite quadrant. Mm-hmm. It's in the trivial and shelfable quadrant. It's a trivial task and you can put it on the shelf and get around to it whenever. That's the do never category or do last So this is how we rate the tasks on our to-do list. Yes. Is with this uh, urgency matrix. Yeah. It's a prioritization tool. It's to help you prioritize all the things you want done. Right. So you can do them in a healthy, fulfilling order. And I, I wonder if putting our tasks in this urgency matrix, deciding what's doable now and urgent and has to get done immediately and what can wait, this will help lower our negative feelings absolutely the task. how are you going to be stressed if you know i only have two things that are vital and pressing and need to be done now mm-hmm. and i have 10 things that are trivial and shelfable and i could get around to them whenever yeah. not a big deal right. all of a sudden my list of 12 things is not overwhelming right it's really only two important things and screw the other ones and then there's the quadrant do asap they're pressing on us but they're not crazy important like the dishes and getting new toilet paper for the bathroom are kind of pressing right so they're pressing on us so we want to get those done asap so but the zoom call is first like right do now is always going to be right hello this is way important so i have a question about this so if the tp and the dishes aren't pressing right now and they're kind of trivial the more the longer we hold off doing them it feels like the closer they get to like having to do them now yeah so the urgency matrix is a living thing all the tasks can change and shift over time if you put off restocking the toilet paper and doing the dishes because they're in the shelfable trivial quadrant they'll slowly move over to the do asap quadrant (laughs) if you let them stay too long like that right okay right there are consequences to leaving stuff in a quadrant for too long. Yes. But if you know that they're shuffable and trivial, they're on the do last quadrant for now, you can have your Zoom call, do the important do now thing. Mm-hmm. And if they slowly make their way 
towards the pressing quadrant, you can deal with them then when they become due ASAP or due now. Right. So they'll move, they'll graduate from quadrant to quadrant. But some things like doom scrolling will never graduate no. to those quadrants. Yeah. Right. It's always just trash. Like right. you live an amazing, awesome life and there's so many things you can do. I can't imagine very many times when doom scrolling is going to graduate up to another no. quadrant. Maybe if you haven't had self-care in a really long time and you need some pampering and you need some like turn the brain off or something and you don't feel like meditating or something, maybe doom scrolling moves up. But this is rare. Yeah. So when I've had a very long day doing a lot of physical work and then I'm doing a lot of computer work by the at the end of the day, when I go and have my smoke, this is my my doom scrolling goes from there to there. But it's not an everyday thing. And, and so that makes a lot of sense. Good example. Thank you. Yeah. And then you have your last quadrant, the do soon or do eventually or do later, or I don't know what you want to call it, where something is vital, but it's shelfable. So these are things like renew your driver's license. Okay. Yeah. Pretty vital. Yes. You know, a like on my list of important things or vital things to my life, that is up there. This is not trivial. It's not something to yeah. forget about and oh well and whatever is vital. But it's also quite shelfable. Like, yeah, I don't need to worry about that today. Yeah. It's not on my list right now. Right. I can let that sit for months. It's on the shelf. As the due date gets closer, it will graduate to a different quadrant right. and it will become vital and pressing. It will become due now. Right. And the urgency matrix can change based on the time of day or week or month. They're could be certain tasks in your urgency matrix to do before lunch. So it's pressing before lunch right. and it's pressing now. But once you pass lunch and you're towards dinner time, there's a whole bunch of different tasks that are pressing and the other ones get demoted to do later or do never or tomorrow, or stuff whatever, like that. Yeah. And so a major cause of procrastination for most people is that they make poor decisions when they're prioritizing their task or putting them in the urgency matrix. Mm -hmm. If you put doom scrolling in the do now, when you have makeup to do and clients to call and date night for your partner or whatever, and you spend 40 minutes on doom scrolling, you will feel crunchy. You will feel stressed. You'll feel anxious after that's done. But you have no one but yourself to blame. That doom scrolling belonged in the do later or do never quadrant. Yeah. And the, like when you go in the bathroom or something quadrant, like, yeah, it's not it's not a pressing thing. But when we move it to a now and all the other stuff gets pushed aside, this is when I think we get the feeling of the negative feeling of procrastination. This is when it becomes a side effect. Yes. Even worse, you feel guilty because you put do yeah. scrolling ahead of all those other do now tasks. Yeah. And it's like, that was not vital. That was not pressing. You went and put a trivial, shelfable thing that probably should be eliminated entirely up in front of date night and up in front of makeup and, and beautification and up in front of clients. Yeah. You, you did that first in your day, you, you will feel bad. You will feel the procrastination and you'll also start feeling the guilt and the beat myself up. Yes. Yeah. Whatever. What yeah. It makes sense to me. You should. Okay. You so should feel that stuff. If you make such a terrible decision, if you're a full grown adult and you put doom scrolling ahead of your partner, your client and your beauty, what the hell, man? Okay. You deserve whatever terrible side effects come from that. Okay. So I have a question though. And similarly, I don't get to pig out on an entire grocery aisle of donuts and feel great afterwards. Right. I deserve whatever negative side effects I get from that crazy dumbass decision. Yeah. Right. So this is what happens. And most people have very little practice with the urgency matrix. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to sit down and draw it out or write it out and plan their tasks. But the people you look up to, the great time managers of the world who live wonderful lives and always make the correct decision with their priorities, they're doing this constantly in their head. And maybe they started practicing it by writing it out, or maybe they're naturals at it. I don't know. But you only have to do it a few times before you get good at it. I can always know what's a priority. I know whether I need to clean up the glass that broke right now, or if I can leave it there while I take care of my client. I know which I can do first. I know if I should go out and pick up all the stuff at the groceries and the stores and the errands, or if I should delay those till Monday morning when the store is quiet. I always know yeah. what to put where and why. It takes practice, but I haven't needed to write it down since I was like 20. Yeah. I have something similar in the in front of my the appointment book because I am old school and I need to write things down. So I have it written in there, but this inspired me to really pay closer attention to that when I'm making my to-do list. So I have a question though. So say I choose to doom scroll ahead of date night and 
my clients and and getting ready for the day, I choose to do this. If I choose to do it and know the consequences, do you think that I would still feel guilty afterwards? That's a great question. And if you choose to do it consciously with full knowledge of the consequences, then you probably won't feel guilty and beat yourself up for it because you know you made the choice and you were prepared for what's going to happen. But you would probably still feel the effects of procrastination. Like your relationship might not get further along and further intimacy. In fact, it might get further. Your clients might not respect you or might ditch you because you didn't keep appointments. Like there will be some consequences. Everything we do is either making our relationships better and boosting our career and helping our clients or it's pulling away from them and and dragging them down and avoiding them and focusing on other things, right? Right. That's life. We're always focusing on one thing or another. We're always either focusing on improving our career or we're focusing on doom scrolling, right? right? Yeah. You're either focusing on improving your relationship or you're focusing on drama with family or something or like fighting with a stranger on the street. Like you can't have it both ways. You can't be extra beautiful and put petals and candles out for your date and get ready and treat them extra well if you're frittering your day away on doom scrolling and fighting with strangers on the street or watching soaps or something. Yeah. So this is it. So you might be like, I intentionally doom scrolled and I'm not feeling guilty. And I'm like, all right, great for you. But there are consequences. You focused on doom scrolling and not the other awesome parts of your life that you could have been elevating. Yeah, fair facts. Yeah, that's true. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. So Rise Rebels, do you understand the urgency matrix? Are you open to trying it and using it before you write your to-do list for the day or the week or month or whatever? I would love to know what you think about the urgency matrix and how you can use this to help yourself. And for me, because of all the other stuff we've talked about, I think I'm going to try changing the, your words a- around a little bit. And what feels positive to me to do now, like I'll, I'll incorporate it, and what feels not so great right now that I know that I'm going to have to work on and raise my vibe about uh, before I tackle that task. Yeah, that sounds awesome. It's kind of like a Marie Kondo thing. Brings joy? Yes. Does not bring yes, joy. Yes, yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yay. Okay, we're going to move on then. And I really appreciate you. So in your newest time management article, you call procrastination a locked train door. And if anyone has seen that movie Sliding Doors, we know that a locked train door can either lead to a cheating boyfriend that we don't know about or being single and finding that hot guy who loves us. So are you going to teach us how to avoid the locked train doors so the audience can find that hottie? Because I already have mine. (laughs) Well, let me ask you, would you say that life is a never ending train of opportunities every single day? I mean, yes, we have lots of different opportunities throughout the day. Yes. And the next day and the the next next, day. Yeah, every day. Yes. And do you believe that this causes most people to think, eh, I'll get around to it because there's always another opportunity. If I spend five years dating some guy or two years dating some guy, I'll just go find another one. It's all good. Yeah. Yes. Or if I doom scroll all morning, no big deal. I'll finish my list tomorrow. I mean, yeah, that's a lot of people feel feel that way. Right. Because they see life as a never ending train of opportunities. Yes. Right. There's always another day. There's always more opportunities. Yes. Right. But would Steve Jobs think this way? Because he knows we could die any time. It's not a never ending train of opportunities. There's absolutely an end. We all die and we're all marching towards it quicker than we think. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is why tip number one helps so much. Yeah. If you keep aware of your own mortality, you don't fall into the trap of thinking, eh, I'll get around to it. There's always another opportunity. But generally, life is a never ending train of opportunities and people see it that way. And because of that, they tend to procrastinate. This is the secret <laughs> here. And so if you don't mind, I'm going to use you as an example because I want to tell the potato printer story. Okay. This is a perfect example. Yeah. A few weeks ago, a friend of ours generously donated a large black and white laser printer to us. And they said we could pick it up anytime it's upstairs in the office. Mm -hmm. Now, their office is fairly busy and there's people in and out of there all the time. So in order not to disturb or interrupt people, we generally try to pick things up in the off hours. And We really needed this printer in order to market our business and promote our offerings because we've been printing a lot of flyers and they've been working very well. Not to mention, Sin has some arts and crafts projects she's really looking forward to using the printer with. 
This is what I call a train car. And life is constantly serving us up these train cars. If you have a busy household in the morning when the bathroom is free, that's a train car. Life has given you an opportunity to sneak in there and get stuff done. If you delay or fail to act or say something like, I'll get around to it, you're allowing the train car to pass. And if you do that, the next train car that comes along might not be so open and inviting. The next train car that comes along might be a closed bathroom door with your family occupying it. The next train car might have a locked door. <laughs> a locked door. Right? Yeah. A locked train door. Yes. So when a train car comes along with an open door that's inviting you, what is the wisest move? To get on it. Yeah. But most people don't do this. They say, ah, I'll get around to it. I'm sure life will give me another opportunity. Yes. And so... A few weeks went by where you didn't pick up the printer. Mm -hmm. We were waiting for toner. We were waiting for the right time, yada, yada, yada. And we woke up one morning and I suggested we go pick up the printer. It sounded like there was no one in the office. I think we should get it now. Yeah. And we normally have a morning routine where we do some other stuff and we don't leave the bed until we do these things. So it was unusual to me that you were like, we should, we should go get this printer. Right. And I said, let's do our routine, but do it quickly and let's go get the printer. Right. You were hesitant and humming and hawing. And for a second, we had that moment of, ah, we'll do it later. Mm -hmm. But I insisted and we went up and got the printer. Yes. And as soon as we returned and brought the printer down, we heard thump, 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 thump upstairs. <laughs> a bunch of people upstairs in the office. Yeah. And we wouldn't be able to get it. And not only that, you told me they were clearing out the office to move in a giant mm -hmm. couch. Couch. Mm -hmm. And if push came to shove and we hadn't taken it, they might have just gotten rid of it. Right. So the train door was open for weeks, but our, ah, uh, let's get around to it attitude put us right to the last minute. And, yeah. and we luckily got it in time. Yeah. We don't know what would have happened afterwards. Right. So that was a case of pouncing on the open train door opportunity in the nick of time. If we had procrastinated any longer, we would have missed it. The printer would be gone. And so what happens when we miss one of these open train door opportunities of life? Some people think, oh, well, whatever. I, I missed it on the printer. No big deal. But by missing it on the printer, what happens to your pocketbook, your bank account? Then I have to spend the $500 on a new printer. Yeah, you missed, you missed $500. What also happens to your business? Like in business, every day that goes by is a day you're either growing the business and getting customers, or it's a day that you're stagnating and your business is dying and you're marching closer to running out of funds. Like Right. And so that means that the business gets put on hold because I have to order the printer and I have to get more paper, I have to get the toner, uh, and then I have to print the flyers. So, so it takes longer. And who knows how many clients I could have gotten in those days that uh, I was waiting on the printer. Yeah. And what if your biggest, juiciest client is about to move? So if you put up flyers, they're going to see you and you're going to find this rich mansion client or whatever. Right. But if you delay it, they're going to move. Right. And you don't even know. No. And so it's never just, uh, I'll get around to it later. People don't realize, but when you do not take life's opportunities and pounce on those train doors when they come by, it's it's costing you time. It's costing you money. It's hurting your business. It's hurting your relationship. And what would happen to, to our relationship if your procrastination with the printer hurt our business and my finances? Yeah, that's that gonna that improve puts, our relationship. Yeah, that puts stress on our relationship. Yeah. We have less money, we have less time. Can and, we go out on so many dates? No. Or? And and no, and this takes away from our business and more things that we could be doing, more articles, more outreach, more whatever, because we I had to put time back into this because I didn't go through the open door. And so people don't realize, but they're doing this all the time. Every little, ah, uh, I'll get around to it later, isn't some fluff thing. It's a fucking dream killer. Like, it will hold you back. It will hurt your dreams in, like, so many areas of your life. Even on the smallest thing. For example, not only was there a printer waiting for us up in that office, there was also a sack of potatoes. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Seriously. Yeah, like a proper bag of potatoes. Yes. Yeah. And this time... I suggested we bring the potatoes as well. And Sen said, no, maybe we could have put them on top of the printer and carried them together. Maybe not. Either way, she decided not to. I said, fine. But because of that, and because of everybody else in the office, now the potatoes were basically gone and our schedule was pretty busy and we were out and about and we weren't going to get back to pick them up anytime soon. So they're either going to get eaten or go bad or whatever. They're basically gone. Now, when we say, uh, let's just get around to the potatoes later, 
It sounds like a fluff thing, but what does this mean about your next grocery trip? So when you do the groceries, mm -hmm. you usually take the little cart and do them by hand because we live downtown and there's stores everywhere. Yes. Yeah. But that cart can only hold so much. Yeah. And so there's gaps and I can't fill things in. It's like a weird game of Tetris inside the cart. Sure. And how heavy can you let the bag be? It can't be that heavy. Right. And if you throw a whole sack of potatoes in there, what happens to your trip? Yeah. Then I have to choose something less heavy. Right. And so now you get less good desserts or you get less meat or less something else. Right. right. Less bananas or something. So your decision to uh, get the potatoes later has now hurt your next grocery trip, yeah. which might hurt your diet, which might hurt your health. Yeah, this is true. On top of that, you had free potatoes. So what happens to your bank account? Yeah, so it's like six bucks. I mean, it's not like it has nothing to do with the amount, but like I was given six bucks worth of free potatoes and now I have to go and purchase them because I lost out on those potatoes. I'm saying this adds up and people are like, oh, where did my money go? Where did my time go? Why is my business suffering? I'm like, well, you slept on the printer. You slept on the potatoes. You put off a million things. You doom scrolled instead of caring about your life. You missed a million train cars. And now the doors are locked. Now you don't have so many opportunities. Now you have to wait for months until the next free printer comes along or you have to save up your own money for it. Right. Now you can't fit as many awesome groceries into your cart. Like there are consequences, man. If you ever catch me saying, uh, I'll get around to it later, something has gone terribly wrong because I understand life and I know that's bullshit. Like, okay, so I have a question. So then how do you know when to, to go through the the train door and when do you because we talked in the last section of the urgency matrix right so how do we know when something should move up to the do it now because the train door is unlocked versus like i don't really feel like doing this now and this feels terrible and this feels bad and i'm just going to put it in the maybe later yeah it's a great question but you tell me you want to stay in bed doom scrolling how often does a free printer get offered to you not that often no right and do you think it's fair to just expect people to leave it sitting around for you for months at a time? Or do you think yeah. it's more respectful and wise to cherish that gift and get it now? Yeah. If you know that not having the printer or missing out on the opportunity is going to set you back for months in your business and it's going to hold back your art projects and it's going to strain your relationship, do you honestly think it belongs in the do later quadrant? No. Right. But does doom scrolling or lounging in bed belong in the do later quadrant? Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. But we waited like a few weeks before we went and, and got it. Can you kind of explain how in that moment? So like we were laying in bed, we were in pajamas well, and it was a Sunday morning and most people don't come to the office on Sunday. So let me ask you, when you offer someone a gift, what's a reasonable time for them to come pick it up? Like if someone wants, if someone says, oh, I can't pick it up today or I'll get it sometime this week. Is that reasonable to you? Yeah. Right. But if two weeks go by, you can feel the train door passing by. No? Like. Yes. Yes. Fair play. Okay. Do unto others as you would have do unto you. Yes. Right. If you wouldn't wait two weeks for a gift pickup, then you shouldn't expect other people to. Right. And if their reason for not picking it up is I wanted to lounge in bed, you'd be like, what the fuck? You don't deserve this printer. No. Well, what I was going to ask is how come that day. Because I felt the train passing. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Like, I've seen you ignore this printer for months on end. The, the toner finally came in. You still didn't bring it down. I'm like, yeah. how long are you going to wait? Right. You're going to lose this opportunity. Fair enough. And it's something everyone can feel. Like we know when, we, when we're sleeping on opportunities and we're doom scrolling or lounging in bed, when we should be making our business go forward or we should be helping our clients or we should be helping our relationship. I know if I've been neglecting my wife for X amount of time and I've been thinking, oh, I should really make her breakfast in bed, but I'm not, but I should. It's like, dude, how long are you going to sleep on this, man? Yeah. You know, you know, every day passing is the train inching away and soon it'll be gone and she'll be like, screw you. I don't want breakfast in bed or I already found another man or whatever it is. And it's like, serves you right, dude. How many times you want to say, I'll get around to it later? How many times you want to sleep your morning away? You get what I'm saying? Life is precious. We're all going to die. If you delay these opportunities, to me, the question isn't when should I do it? It should be try to do everything as early as you can without overwhelming yourself or being panicked. Like just do everything as early as you can. Why, why not? Like and that's the secret to procrastination right there. Like <laughs> actually that that was our main secret. But I think the whole entire episode, to be honest with you, each single one that we talked about today, including the first one, all gave us like massive, incredible secrets to procrastination. Like we cured procrastination, y'all. Like 
I 100% believe that. This was awesome. You are amazing. And I don't say that because I love you deeply. I really, really do. I say that because like, this is fire. This is incredible information, wonderful perspective. And I want to know, Rise Rebels, are you going to, are you ready to shift your perspective on procrastination? Are you ready to try this out and like really make an effort so you don't have to feel that shitty feeling of procrastination because I don't like that and I know that you don't either because it doesn't feel good to put it off. And like to use the printer example, I was starting to already feel like about it like, well, because we were waiting on a shelf, we ordered a shelving to put the printer on. And so I and then for some reason the, the shelving was taking longer. And so I was like, oh well we can wait. But but there was no communication either. Like I didn't say to our friend, like, hey, I know you gave us the printer, but our shelving won't arrive until the 15th. Is it okay if we leave it here? At any time she could have said, Oh, I guess they don't want it. They haven't said anything, so we'll toss it. And then I would have, we would have had a locked train door. So yeah, that's, that's, that's really crappy. And so I was just going to say, that's another bonus trick is even if you can't go get the whole thing or do the whole task, you can still like get your foot in the train door by just messaging someone or getting the ball rolling. Like, Hey, I'll be coming to pick it up five days tops. That's a great way to keep the opportunity around, keep your foot in the train door. But people don't even do that. No, I didn't. And it's not like, I didn't talk to her all the time or see her constantly. We we worked on two projects, more than two projects, since she gave us the printer. Could have mentioned. And at any point, I could have said, oh, hey, I'm, I ordered shelving. It's coming. And that was my bet. And so I learned a serious lesson from, from this experience to really work on whatever it is as soon as possible. Like, as soon as that it feels good to me and I have it on the urgency matrix and decide where, where it goes. So... This was really helpful for me. And I'm not even like a huge major procrastinator anymore. But man, I'm like, I feel like you gave me the secret to feeling better about all of this. You should see the article. I know I can't. Oh, it's going to be so great. Yeah. And as soon as I stop procrastinating and I help edit it. And, and when we do, I'll put it in the, the link to the, in the description so everyone can, can get to it. Thank you so much for all the lessons and your amazing perspective and all your help with this. I feel so much better. I want to know how you're feeling. Leave it in the comments. Tell me what you think so we can help other people who are lurking and so we can have connection between us because I love connection. Thank you. So I just have one one last question. Do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our wonderful audience? Yes. We all make mistakes with time management occasionally, and that's okay. You just get back on the horse. One of my time management mistakes was not keeping this video on time. We rambled too long, and now I have a major editing job. So I'm going to fix it by ending it fast. I trust you guys learned everything you need to learn. I believe you're going to practice it. Go manage that time. Peace. And that's why our book and this podcast are called Eyes Wide Open. And after today, you know how to murder procrastination. And since people-pleasing is a source of procrastination, this video here, Jay and I are going to teach you how to fix that too to help you keep your eyes wide open. Keep rising.